everyone, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for another tutorial. And today I'm going to be featuring the Pantone Color of the Year Living Coral on my card design. Pantone always releases a new color towards the end of the current year so that the new year has a brand new fresh color to embody it. Living Coral is the color that Pantone has selected and I'm going to be using this to create my card today. In my card, I'm going to be featuring a couple of Simon Says Stamp dies. The one on the right is the new Outline Clustered Leaves die, and it coordinates with an older die that's on the left called the Clustered Leaves die. Both of these can be layered together to create beautiful leafy elements on your cards. Now you want to make sure that you die cut them in the same direction, so that way when you go to layer them, they all layer very nicely. I'm cutting the solid leaves from vellum and the outlines from white cardstock. I set those aside and I'm going to start ink blending with a Tim Holtz Distress Blending Brush and the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Abandoned Coral Ink. I'm blending on some color in a gradient, forming a beautiful hue going down the entire card, which is going to give this card a lot of movement, especially with how I'm going to add the leaves on later on. After I added some ink blending across this panel, I did take some water and splatter that across the panel to create water splatters. When I lift off that water with a dry towel, it's going to leave behind these really subtle water splatters, which look really great and add a lot of texture. At the same time, I'm also going to take some Perfect Pearls and mix this with some water to create a mixture that I can splatter onto the background. Now I made sure the background was completely dry before I did this because I didn't want the splatters to bleed or anything onto wet paper. So I made sure the paper was completely dry before splattering on the color. I let this dry a little bit and I sped it up with my heat gun, but I didn't want these splatters to be as intense as they are. So I'm only going to dry them about halfway and then take my towel and dab off the excess ink that's still drying. This leaves behind a very subtle shimmery texture in the background. Bringing back in that outline clustered leaves die cut that we created from the white cardstock, I'm going to use my Distress Blending Brush and also the Oxide Ink in Abandoned Coral to add some color onto the leaves. I'm focusing most of the heaviest color along the stems of the leaves, and I'm letting the edges have more of a whiter tip. This is going to give my leaves some really nice lift off of the background that we created with that same Oxide Ink color. This is also going to layer onto the piece of vellum that we cut out with the solid leaf cluster die. As I add some adhesive to the backside of the outline, I will line this up onto the vellum piece and this is where lining these up and making sure that they're being cut in the same direction is coming into handy now. Because now I know that these are going to layer together really nicely and I can layer these onto my card, which I'm working on building right now. I added my ink blended background onto the card and then I layered my leaves on top of that. Once I let that dry a little bit, I'm going to add a couple of the negative pieces that were cut out from that outline leaf and I'm going to pop these up off of the leaf clusters with some foam tape. I used just a few and then to accent things, I brought in some little clear droplets with a shimmer in them to add some pretty shimmery touches with the sequins that I'm going to glue on as well. The sequins are from a couple of Simon Says Stamp mixes and feature a lot of beautiful coral and pink tones. And since because I wanted my card to feature mostly coral tones, this is why I opted to use those particular colors of sequins. Onto the white leaves, I'm going to add some Moxie Glitter Glue. This gorgeous clear glitter glue has beautiful tones in it. The glitter has almost a pinkish, corally color, and it really catches the light beautifully. Onto a piece of white cardstock, I'm going to smush some Distress Oxide Abandoned Coral ink onto it. This is because I want a sentiment strip to coordinate with the Love Script die that I added onto my card, but I wanted the cardstock color to match perfectly with everything else on the card. So by using the Oxide ink and just making sure that it was completely dry before I start stamping, this allows me to get my own custom color of cardstock. And I can stamp my sentiment onto here, emboss it with white, and then trim it out into a sentiment strip that will coordinate perfectly with the entire card design. 
I added that along with the Love Sugar Script Dye from Birch Press Designs and that touch of gold adds a really nice, elegant finish to this card. My final step was to take some Nouveau Drops. These are the Morning Dew Nouveau Drops and I'm adding those into each of the sequins. This gives them a beautiful domed finish and it helps minimize their strong color tones. So when the Morning Dew Nouveau Drops dry, you can see that their color is a lot more subtle and it matches the card beautifully. I hope that today's video has inspired you to create with some of these beautiful products that I used and also the new Pantone color of the year, Living Coral. Feature coral on any of your upcoming projects because this is a color that exudes a lot of warmth and I think everybody could use some warmth during this time of year. So thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to stop back soon for more crafty inspiration and I will see you again very soon in another video. Thanks for watching.